Hi, I'm Owen Ballas, Professor of Music Technology at California Institute of the Arts. We're going to continue our series here looking at blocks in the new Reactor 6. This time, we're going to be taking a look at some of the FM modulations, as well as some of the other filters and other blocks available. To start, we've mocked up four oscillators here, and we've configured them so that essentially they're FM operators. Let's take a look at some of the sounds that we can generate with this setup. We can do also more straight up kind of distorted sounds. or some mixture of the two. Let's take a look at how we built this synth. Jumping inside, Blocks is very easy to work with, and building this synth actually was very quick. We can see here that we've extended the idea of building a basic synth and we're using some of the same ideas that we had previously looked at. Essentially, we have an envelope that's controlling a volume knob. It's also modulating the cutoff of a filter. We're using the same reverb at the output, but now we replaced our single oscillator with four oscillators that we're using a mix block to blend them together. You might also notice that there's some wires that seem to be missing. What we've done is used a built-in feature of Reactor that allows us to do wireless connections. We can send and receive signals. So what we did was we hooked up a send to the pitch input, and this just requires a name. So once we have it here, we can go up and rename it to something, and that'll make it available for all of our other receive objects. I'm gonna put the name back to pitch, and we can see here on this pitch, which is actually originally a receive object, so let me show you how we can do that. We'll say receive, and then I could rename this to something like P2, just so we can see that it's different, although it could be the same name as well. And I just simply say connect to the pitch send. This can allow some of the more complex routing schemes in your block setup to look a little cleaner. Once we have this, we can see that essentially I created four sets of the same idea. I took an envelope and used it to control an oscillator. Then I took the output of one of these oscillators, just the sign output, so it doesn't matter what I actually set the oscillator to. And I used that to control the FM input which is the frequency modulation input on the other oscillator. Increasing the FM input adds additional harmonics to a sound. It'll change the timbre of a very simple waveform into something much more complex. Additionally, I took this and fed it back into the FM input on the original one. This creates sort of like a feedback system. I also took the output and connected it up to this sync input. A sync input restart your wave whenever the other wave crosses zero. So we have a way to say, hey, when this wave is doing something, restart my other wave. Again, this also changes the timbre or quality of very simple oscillators. So the way to see this is that I have two of these here in this kind of feedback setup, and another set here in a similar setup. And then I'm just taking the output of each of them into the mixer. Let's go back to our panel view and take a look at how I've laid this out. We can see that we have one envelope associated with one oscillator. And just so I could keep everything straight on the panel, I went ahead and renamed each of the oscillators. You can do that by going up here in your properties panel and giving them a different name. Again, we can see by enabling the A input, all of our modulation sources pop up and we can increase or decrease or even invert the modulation signal. Let's take a look through what we've set up here. Essentially, we went and 
tuned the oscillators. So this one is 12 semitones higher than this one, plus 20 cents. Cents are sort of ways to get in between semitones. So you can fine tune the pitch of your oscillator. Then what I did was go ahead and apply the modulation to the pitch. And this again comes from the envelope. So when I trigger this envelope, the pitch is gonna sweep here. We can see that when I press a note. I also applied it here to this FM amount. So it starts out that we have FM being applied, but I have a inverse kind of relationship here to the envelope. So the FM should actually decrease over time. One thing I want to point out is there are three different modes for applying FM synthesis to your oscillators. All of them sound slightly different and we don't need to get into the technical details. So I would just recommend flipping through the three and seeing which one you like. This linear TZ stands for linear through zero. So I recommend if you want to find out information, just Google linear through zero and there's a whole world of information about these different types of FM modes. Over here, we're doing the same thing, applying FM, modulating. But what I also want to look is how we're applying sync to some of these. We can see that I've turned up the sync input. So now this one is receiving both FM and a sync input at the same time. This makes it very easy to have evolving sounds that change over time. This synth is not all that much more complex than the first one we tried to build with blocks. The other thing I wanted to point out was that we're now using a different filter than the state variable filter that comes from the bento box set. If we go here into our library, we can see that there are boutique, Digilog, Drivers, Modern, Monarch, Rounds, and Utilities. All of these blocks do different things, but in some of these we have different filters. There's the Monarch filter, there's the Modern Paul filter, and in here we have this dual SKF filter, which has an interesting Salon key filter as its sort of basis, and allows us to combine both a high pass and a low pass filter together. It creates some very interesting sounds. Later on, we're gonna take a look at this driver here, which is also very interesting in that it combines a filter with kind of a saturation circuit. So let's take a moment to play with the synth and see what we can do with our FM synth. So right now we have this sound that evolves over time. And we can go through and modulate our parameters. And we can even modulate the parameters down here below to get a different feel for how different amounts of FM change the sound. Again, there's a lot of expressivity in this patch, even though it's very simple. And Connecting some of these knobs up to the keyboard would allow you to play it in real time. But let's take a look at a slightly simpler patch and get a feel for how FM synthesis changes and creates its sounds. So we can see here we're applying some FM modulation to this oscillator here. And again, if we jump into our panel, we can see that this is being fed into input one in our mixer. So let's just go back to the output here Sorry, let me turn down the modulation here. There we go. And because it's tuned so low, we're not really hearing it. So here we are. And this is pretty much just a straight triangle wave. So we can change the oscillator like before. or add a different timbre by increasing the FM amount from our other oscillator. In this way, we can take a muted wave and introduce a brighter, harsher timbre over time. What I would suggest is exploring this type of synthesis by routing envelopes to these FM amounts and creating evolving textures and timbres over time. 
Up next, we'll take a look at how we can mock up some basic percussion using these blocks. If you want to learn more about Reactor, go to cadenze.com, where we cover how to build your own synths from scratch using Primary.